Yo, what's up, I, gamers? What's up, gamers? <laughs> uh, I'm here with uh, my wife, Anne Marie. Hello. And today we're gonna be, or I'm gonna be hearing uh, Anne Marie's top ten board games. Uh, I'm wearing my my board game shirt. Uh, and I am not. And he's not, um, even though I told him to. I didn't feel like it. So, so we I can match, but we're not now. Uh, I I never want to match with you. Uh, so in this video, uh, she has prepared a top ten list. Of games, uh, I don't know the list in advance, and she's gonna, t you know, list them off, ten to one. Talk about her thoughts on them, and I'll uh, uh, react and uh, discuss them with her. So you'll react. He'll react by going, "Oh, that game sucks." Blech, bad game. All right, number ten. Okay, number ten. I picked Clank. Really? Yeah. The last time we played it, you were like, "I don't like Clank anymore." <laughs> We don't have to do this video. I can, <laughs> I can go. I'm, what? I'm just saying. I'm surprised. No, I lo I love Clank. Just Clank say is fun. It's just like a really. I like it because it's like pretty simple and easy to learn and just kind of casual. Mm. Sometimes I really like a casual game. I thought the. I think the expansions are really fun because they add like different mechanics. It's a it's a deck building game where you use your deck to go through a dungeon. Uh, and you can pick up items and you know use your cards to move further or whatever. It's really fun. There's also uh, Clank in space, but you're saying original Clank? Better? I think original Clank. Okay. I thought about it. I stared at the the shelf we have that just has Clank on it for a long time and was like, <laughs> I think I like Clank again. Well, we should play it again because I. Look, I, it's number ten. It's not like it's number one. <laughs> <laughs> I like Clank in Space more, but I still yeah. think Clank is a good Clank in Space, the first time we played Clank in Space, I wasn't that into it, and I was like, I kind of don't really like it, but the last time we played Clank in Space, I actually was more into it, but I still think I like original Clank better. Okay. So. You like fantasy stuff more than Space Yeah, stuff, anyway. yeah, the theming for that is, yeah. Number eight. nine. Oh. <laughs> I was reading the wrong. Fuck number nine. Number, number nine. eight. Number, number nine sucks. Number nine, I picked Exit the Game. Ah, uh, okay. And they're just like fun little escape room games. That Are they meant for only two people? Uh, no, you can actually play them with as many as you Okay, want. they work really good for two people. Yeah. I feel like every time we play them, it's like, you know, they only take, well, it takes as long as you take, so sometimes we take- They're usually about an hour. They're usually about an hour, hour to, or two, to do know. the escape room. And they're just like, everything that comes in each box is like, you can only do it once because you have to like cut up stuff. But I think that they're nice because they're all different themes. There's like different puzzles. We've only, we haven't played any of the super hard ones, have we? No, the the, the Egyptian one was actually supposed to, was pretty tough. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, I just think they're really fun. And I like that they work well with two people because we can just play them. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they're fun. They're just like, they're not, they don't take that long. They're pretty simple. Um, like they're not like easy, but they're it's not like hard to learn because it's just an escape room. Yeah, basically, so you can just whip it out. they're like escape rooms in a box. Mm -hmm. Really easy to uh, learn how to play, but the puzzles themselves are actually pretty tricky. Yeah. And if you like real escape room games, then these are like a perfect fit for people who like that experience because they're all about going aha and solving different puzzles and uh, going to the next part and unlocking the next part and trying to do it in a certain amount of time. Okay, number eight, I picked Machi Koro. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I we've had Machi Koro a long time. That was one of the first games one of the we first, were gifted like, by friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so some of that is also like a little bit of like not nostalgia, but kind of like I have sentimental like attachment to it. But mm. also, I think it's really fun. It's just it's really lighthearted. The aesthetic is really cute. Mm. It's very easy to learn. Um, I will say though the that the expansions are kind of essential. Oh yeah, the I mean, base game is kind of boring. Well, so actually, the version of Machi Koro you can buy now has all the expansions mm. in it. Great, we had to buy them all. <laughs> yeah, we we got it when it first came yeah. out. Uh, basically, Machi Koro is a game where you're buying sort of like these properties, and on your turn you roll dice, uh, and like they trigger different properties. So like if you roll a four, oh these the blue properties trigger on anybody's turn. Yeah, uh, and you're just, like you're that. basically just building like a little city. Yeah, and you and you collect money when they trigger, and you get more money, and you buy more cards. You're kind of building a tableau of like cards from like one to twelve, basically based on die rolls. I actually like the game Space Base uh, better. I think Space Base that is was, kind of, it's like very it was between those two, but I oh, picked Machi Koro. Like, because I was like Space Base was not on my list, but it almost made it on for similar reasons. But mm. Machi Koro, because I said I have like more sentimental like, yeah, no, I think to that's it, and fair. I like the theming better. Yeah, the but Space Base is similar and it's very. Yeah, Good. the theming for Machi Koro is very cute, kind of Japanese, like, town, yeah. harbor town aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Number seven. I think you're going to be surprised, because I picked um, Ganshan Clever, and just twice as clever. 
I'm not surprised. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. you're always, I don't know. I thought you'd be surprised. Do you, well, how did you think I was going to be surprised? Because I don't like them or you, I thought you I thought, I, mean, I thought maybe you didn't think I was that into them. Mm -hmm. But I really like, I picked, I just put, I wrote just as clever, but I think it's twice as clever. Well, there's that sequel is type twice. But as I just, clever, I put yeah. both of them. Like mm -hmm. they're basically the same thing. Yeah. Um, so Ganchan Clever, um, it's just like a really simple roll and write games, or both of them are. Mm -hmm. You basically <clears throat> roll dice, colored dice, and you can use them to you do like strategic do different like placement. points, combos, and things like you that. You kind of like draft the dice onto your like sheet, yeah. and then yeah, you based on like the patterns or not patterns, but like placement, you get different points. And mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever won. But I have a really That's fun- That's because you play against me. I have a really fun time, and it's also another one that works good with two people. It does work well with two. A lot of uh, these are going to be like, oh, it works really good with like two people, because a lot of times, especially during the past year, like mm. it's only been us playing together, mm. so. I think a good two-player game is great, so that's also why I picked those, because they're- Because like, there's other roll and rates that I like, like I really like Welcome To, but I mm. can't really do that with- Like, I feel like with two people it would be kind of boring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But Ganchan Clever and Twice as Clever, um, they're just really simple and they don't take a long time to play, they're easy to learn, and it's just, you know, you can just play it quickly. The Railroad Inc. is similar, it's not on my list, but it's like another one mm -hmm. that is good for two people. Like just any, I don't know, I like just simple... I am surprised, I figured you were like, welcome to a Railroad Inc. more than I I Ganchan do. Clever. I, Again, I was thinking about Railroad Inc., but I think Ganchan Clever, like, if I was thinking about which one would I want to play, I'd probably pick Ganchan Clever. Railroad Inc.'s really fun, though. But oh, I no, have to, I, I think... But I, I feel like I'm more likely to be in the mood for Ganchan Clever. I think Ganchan Clever, I think that's my favorite of those three. You know? Yeah. So, so, that's a good choice. Number, Number six. Number six. I picked Legendary Encounters. The alien one. Yeah, the alien one. You didn't know I liked that one more than Marvel? No. I, oh, I'm, really? I'm surprised. Why? Because uh, it's so hard. I, that's kind of why I like it. Tell me what you like about Encounters or Legendary in general. Legendary, well, okay, I like like Marvel Legendary too, but I picked Encounters because I like the theming more. Okay. And I actually do, because sometimes when we're playing Legendary, like Marvel Legendary, I feel like it's either very hard or it's like you just wipe it. Okay. And I like Encounters more because it's kind of like, it's a little more consistent, I feel like, with the difficulty. Crushing, but yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, but it's like, it's not like, oh, these four were really easy and then one we just can't beat. It's like, they're all like very, like, kind of difficult and like challenging. Okay. And I feel like it's a lot more tense because of the theming and because it's harder. Mm -hmm. So I think like, for, it is definitely more tense. for immersion wise, I think I liked it more. Mm -hmm. um, even though I'm always like, oh, we lost, like whatever. Yeah. Okay, but sometimes when you lose in Legendary, it's bullshit. Yes. Like, the first game feels very tense and like, oh, the alien's hunting you down. The second one feels like you're shooting down. But see, that's kind of why, aliens. so you're always like, oh, you don't like when a game is really hard. But I don't know, if it's like, if I'm like really immersed in it, yeah. then I can kind of appreciate it because it's more tense. But Marvel Legendary mm. is not like, I'm not that immersed in it. I don't feel like... So mm. when so when you just kind of like lose for some like dumb reason, you're kind of like okay. I think it depends <laughs> on the scheme in Marvel, yeah. but I like Marvel. I like it better. But Legendary in general is a deck building game where as a team you're uh, playing combos to try to defeat villains or yeah, aliens, and you're uh, they're like invading a city or the ship, uh, and they're all very heavily scenario based. Legendary Encounters has the stuff, which it's it's kind of annoying when you're playing it, mm -hmm. but looking back as like immersion and theme, like it has like the chest burster and it's like that makes it really tense when yeah. like somebody is gonna die of a chest burster yeah. in like two turns. A chest burster is a card in the game where if you draw it, because it goes in your discard pile and when you draw it and you can't get rid of it, you, you die. die. You, you, just, <laughs> you basically have to you, restart. You, uh, I mean, you don't have to restart, but the character dies and the game is so hard, you can't. You can't so, do it by yourself. You can't we we played it yourself. with two people. I guess, can you yeah. play it with more than two? You can, but the game, Legendary gets harder and harder the more people yeah. you play with. I, I think it's best with two. So I, that's why I liked Encounters over Marvel, just mm. because I think, I like that it's more consistent, even though it's a lot harder. Mm. I like the consistency and I like the theming more. Are you ready for number five? Number five. Everdell. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know that, I love that's no surprise. Yeah, Everdell, talk about Everdell. I love Everdell. It is. Sorry, I'm reading my notes on it. It's a cute little uh, worker placement game where you basically are populating your individual cities through. I we haven't played it in a while, so like the exact rules are kind of fuzzy to me. But you know, you place your work. You can do like a couple things on your turn, mm -hmm. and you're basically just populating your city. It goes through four. I think it goes through all four seasons. 
Right? Yeah, it's pretty like, much. It's yeah. three or four seasons, and then mm. by the end of like the winter season, whoever has the most points wins, obviously. Yeah. Um, however every game works. Yeah. But Everdell's theming and art is so cute. The board is like really, it's like basically this tree that you build up, mm. and like all the components are like under it. And um, it's very like lighthearted, but it's it's kind of it's challenging though. Like you have yeah. to kind of it's kind of it's got meat. It's a meat. It's, game. it's meaty. Yeah. Mm, it's kind it of it looks like a kind of like a kitty game, but yeah. there, there's a good amount of substantial it's really good. It's one of when we after we played it the first time, I was like, man, I just want to like I was like, can we play Everdell? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> amazingly, I was like, can we play a board game? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can we play Everdell? Yeah. Um, it's almost like not quite like engine building, but kind of. Kind of, so... Because you're populating your city, and then each time, like, things happen, and if somebody else triggers something, you can get stuff. Yeah. And I really like stuff like that. I really like worker placement slash, like, type engine It's like Tableau building. card building, where basically, yeah. like she said, it's a worker placement game. You put little workers on something. You can get berries or twigs and get resources, and then use those to play cards, and the cards will have effects. Like, yeah. you get different powers, or if you have this card, you can play this card for free, or yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. Or so. it'll be like, if you have these two cards, then you get a bonus for this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> boom, 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 oh. boom, boom. She's fine, she's fine. It's not gonna knock it over. She's, yeah, we're just covering the camera, Sophie. <laughs> she, uh, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> and I just think the game itself is gorgeous. Mm. Um, it's just, it's like basically like animal. Yeah. Animal. Kind of red wall like, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, I, I was yeah. like, I don't know how to describe this. Like, Very gorgeous art and presentation. Uh, it's a the gorgeous game. The components are really nice, And too. the gameplay is quite good. Yeah. So, number four. Number four. I picked Aeon's End. Oh. I know. Yeah, you're, no. su you're surprised. No, 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 no. <laughs> that makes sense, especially because we played through with, like, all of Legacy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aeon's End but, is another co-op deck builder mm -hmm. where, uh, kind of similar to Legendary... Like, uh, in terms of it's a co-op deck builder, yeah, yeah, and you're, like, yeah, 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 working yeah. towards a common, like, you're trying to defeat this boss, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And each boss has, like, a different horrible effect that they do. And Aeon's End can actually be pretty tough, too. Aeon's is, a, yeah, it's a challenging game. But sometimes we, like, wipe it, and sometimes it's super challenging, but I feel... I would say most of the time we don't wipe it. No, 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 most, most of the time... time but it's sometimes... Fair, it's, but like, when you skin do, of our teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, that's kind of what I like about it, too, because um, even though I, like, get pissed if we play for, like, several hours and then lose, mm -hmm. Aeon's End is super satisfying when you win because it's so tight every time. It's super good with two people. Um, the I really like the Legacy versions. Mm -hmm. We played a... The Legacy one was really fun, and now we're kind of... Uh, it's sort of like a campaign right now, too. Yeah, like, it's the, like, a lot of the story. newer sets have, like, mini campaigns. And I, I really like that. I really like um, theming and story, so it's kind of fun because it'll be, like, stuff that happened in the last time we played is, like, relevant. Yeah, and, like, and we'll the be, lore like, and characters yeah. come back, and our favorite character is Zaxos. Yeah, Zaxos. Zaxos is a prick. What a piece of shit. Um, so that's what I like about it, too. I really, really like um, the theming, um, and the universe is really interesting. I like... We usually will kind of be like, these are the two best characters we should be using, so we'll use them. But I do mm. like to try the different characters and abilities. But I've liked pretty much every version of Aeon's End we've played. Like, either the basic one, or the campaign we're doing now, or the legacy version. They were all really fun. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, customization you can do, too, with kind of, like, how you play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, based on what character you're using, you can what choose, cards are available. You can choose what spells, items, and... What is it? Spells, items, and uh, gems. You you use those to like buy. Yeah, you pick like basically. nine cards or every time. And stuff. I like to randomize it, and every game is different. No, yeah, and that's yeah. that's kind of fun too because it's like based on what's available. Like, oh, what am I gonna do right. with my character? And you know, some characters are better for healing, some are better for like you had a character that was like, oh, I can shoot and attack like eight times from this. Oh well, what it was, <laughs> it was like there's a guy who's great who basically you can charge, you fire these spells from breaches. And you can keep charging his breach yeah. up. Oh, so it's yeah. like, yeah. my spell does eight more damage based on eight, like one damage for every token on it. So I'm just like, put a token on it, put a token but on it, put a token the on theming, it. The theming and immersion is super good in Aeon's End because mm. it's like so tight. And it's because it's so like heavily story-based too right now. Mm. But also because um, it's pretty hard. So when you do win... You it's know, very satisfying. It's really satisfying, so I like yeah. Aeon's End a lot. When you... Oh, that's uh, right, yeah. When, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, like the one big thing. But yeah, you basically... Uh, you don't shuffle your you deck. Don't shuffle you don't shuffle your deck just, and you just flip it. So yeah. you can str strategize yeah. like card placement in your discard pile and go, I'm going to put these cards next to each I other. I forgot like the whole point so of the game. No, not the whole point, <laughs> the but whole a, a very like a very original part of the yeah, game yeah. is when you're done with the... With, Uh, 
uh, when you're done with your draw pile, you just take your discard pile, flip it, yeah. and then you don't shuffle it, which is, I think, an ingenious mechanic. But yeah, other actually, than that, it's thought, a fantastic You, you asked game. me a while ago, you were like, do you want to play the new Aeons and stuff? And I was like, yeah, and then we never did. I've just been busy. Yeah, but, but do... I'm like, I'm actually like, I want to play the new Aeons and stuff. I'm just waiting for him to like not be super busy. Yeah. We, I mean, I've been busy too. We've just been busy, but... We definitely need to play it soon. Um, Number three, I chose Azul. Base? I think no. I wrote I wrote I like all the versions, but if I have to pick one, I think I'd pick the original. Okay. I no, know no. I know that you like the 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 more advanced ones more. I think my favorite is the stained glass one. They're, but, they're all but tell very me good, tell me tell us about I, why do you like uh Azul so Azul. basically Azul is a game where you basically you just take turns basically drafting these colored tiles from a communal pool and you put them on your own board and based on sets and patterns that you make you get points. You it's, basically fill up rows. And then they go over, and if they like line up yeah. like, vertically, horizontally, you score points. Or it's you, very, you know. it's very simple. Like at its base, like idea, you're just drafting, and like you know, and based on certain other things, you might lose points or get more points. It just depends. I wrote forbidden snack factor, ten out of ten. The, those the components those are really nice. Look like they look damn like little good starbursts. starbursts. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But original Azul, I picked over the other ones, um, or I would pick if I had to choose one because. I like the simplicity of it. Mm. I think the first time we played it, it's a little bit of like, not sentimental because it's not like Machi Cora where we've had it forever, but it's kind of like, the first time I played it, I was like, wow, this is so like... It's a good memory. It's really yeah. fun. And I was like, let's play again, let's play again. So it's mm. a good memory, but it's also just base Azul is like, I feel like if you want to find out if you'll like Azul, you could just get it because mm. it's very simple to learn, yeah. very quick and easy to play. You can play it with two people or more people. Mm -hmm. It works great with two or four or however many right. that it goes up to. And if you really like Azul, then yeah, you should get um, the stained glass ones and the, what is it, Summer Pavilion? Yeah, Summer Pavilion. Because uh, they're all really good. Mm -hmm. I, I really love all of them, but mm -hmm. I think base Azul, just in its pure simplicity, I think it's very, very replayable. Well, they all are, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just, something about the base one, I was like, it's so simple. Yeah. I, I really like the just how clean and just very easy to learn it is. But it's challenging still. You know, you gotta like, what is your opponent doing? What are you gonna do? How can you mess with your opponent? Mm. Has like all that stuff. What you, something you touched on, the basic Azul's greatest strength is you can play lots of it in a row. Yeah, whereas, the other ones take whereas, a little longer. The other longer. ones, they're longer. So after one game, or two, you're like, okay, I think I'm good. Usually yeah, after I one think, game. I think when yeah. we got Summer Pavilion, we played like two games and we were like, yeah, that was really yeah. good. But when we got, when we first were playing regular as well, we played a ton. You can we play were like, like four, let's play like five games. Five games yeah. like in a row. Because it's very quick and, um, you know, the com like we said, the components are so nice. They're nice little We should tiles. do a thing where we play all through all three of them. We should do a thing where we just mix all the components from all of our games we into should a do big a thing bowl. Where, yeah, where I design a uh, Mega Azul. Mega Azul. <laughs> mega Azul. No, no, I mean the components from every single game we have. Oh. Oh! We're just gonna dump them all into, into Got a bowl. it. I think that'll go really well with Star Wars Rebellion. Yes. Uh, all of Legendary. <laughs> every card. Oh uh, my god. Yeah. No, they're so organized. That would be horrible. I actually have no idea what your top two are gonna be. Number two is Gloomhaven. Ah! That makes sense. It was almost number one, but mm. number two is Gloomhaven. Uh, Gloomhaven is essentially, it is just a very streamlined uh, Dungeons and Dragons simulator, almost. I wouldn't say that, but it, it gives a similar you don't, feel. Okay, but you don't play D and D. But the gameplay is not like D and D. It kind of is at its core. Oh, okay. I mean, well, you it's, it's, explain, explain. It's much more. It like takes stuff from like pen and paper sure. RPGs. Yeah. And it basically just puts them in a format that is very like you don't actually have to do that much mm. like work for it like. Yeah, you're building your character based on a class, and you still have like flexibility with your character, mm. but it's basically like, okay, when you level up, you choose like from two or three different abilities, and then you add that to your character's abilities. Mm. Whereas versus D&D, &D, where it's like there's way more to choose from. Mm. So it basically just, I think it just pairs it down to very simple, well, you don't... I, I mean, maybe I'm misunderstanding D&D. &D. In D&D, &D, do you have a grid-based map, and you play cards from your hand to trigger abilities no, on I said a grid. It's streamlined. But I would argue they're not even because isn't D D just like, oh no, I'm gonna D &D do this a, and then you wait, roll wait, a wait, dice wait, wait, and no, like it's no, 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 no. succeeds. What what D D you you do have a grid based map. You do? Yes. Okay. That's like the whole all battle maps in D D are grid based. And yes All of them? I didn't play, when I played D&D, &D, we didn't use Well, I mean, them. we don't use them, but typically people do. The, the grid base is just the basic one, but I'm talking about Gloomhaven, what Gloomhaven's mechanics are, 
are basically you have a deck of cards in your hand that are all your abilities and the top and the bottom half of each card has a thing you can do and when you play a card you have to pick a card that has like you pick like the bottom of one card and the top of one card and you do them. Well, yes, um, I, the gameplay is not the same, but it feels similar when you're playing it okay. to like that kind of strategy. Like, sure. what am I gonna do? How far away am I from this enemy? Can I heal my party? Mm. Like, how close am I? Because I think for me, what I like about Gloomhaven is even though it has this kind of fantasy sort of feel to it, it feels like a kind of a Euro game to me, where it's I almost think, what like did I, write? A, I wrote, I said, although it's very structured, which is like not like a normal like pen and paper RPG, mm -hmm. um, there's still lots of flexibility for choices, how you want to build your character, mm. how you're going to like attack, like what you're going to do. And um, you have like your town and then you can go to different quests. Mm. So obviously it's more like, it's like a board game. It's not a, a tabletop role playing game. Mm. It is a board game. But mm. for me, it gives a similar feeling to like, I feel like there's a lot of like choices you can make, lots of flexibility for how you want to play, even within that structure, mm. which I really like. But what I really like about Gloomhaven is um, just the theming and also how much like content there is. Yeah. Like there's so much that we haven't even touched. Yeah. Um, we haven't played in a while because of COVID. Right. But um, I think it's really fun. And for me, you know, because I do play D and D, it does kind of give me. When I was when I started playing D and D, I was like, "Oh, this is kind of like Gloomhaven." Mm. Like there was a lot of stuff I understood in D and D because of Gloomhaven. I see. Like okay. initiative, like that kind of stuff, and gotcha. like just certain stuff. So that's why I just I don't know. I really like it's just super expansive. I think it's really fun to do party achievements. Yeah. Your party's basically just choosing quests to go on, what storyline they want to follow. Yeah, getting um, achievements, getting unlocking new unlocking content. Unlocking new, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fun. I really love Gloomhaven. It's basically just a massive campaign-based game. Mm -hmm. I look forward to playing it again. It's been so long. Yeah. But it's really, really fun. Gloomhaven's so expand, like, so huge and, like, massive, I can't even, like, describe it in a concise amount of time. I know what your number one is now, but I'll wait till you reveal it. Number one... What do you think it is? I, I, I... No, know no, I want you to guess. I mean, I already, it's Pandemic Legacy. Yes, yeah, yeah, it is yeah, Pandemic yeah. Legacy. Based off what you... Based off what I said about Gloomhaven. Yeah, but go ahead. Pandemic so, Legacy. Pandemic Legacy. Uh, it is just a campaign version of the game Pandemic. Um, we've only played Season 1. We have Season 2. I really want to play Season 2, mm -hmm. but we need to like get a group for it. Mm -hmm. So that'll be like a post-COVID thing, but I'm really looking forward to it. We played it a long time ago. This was not like a recent thing we played, but when I was thinking about like what games do I like the most? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I love Gloomhaven. Uh, I liked Aeon's End because of the legacy campaign stuff. And I was like, you know what? I think Pandemic Legacy is probably the best game that I've played, I think. Yeah, I don't know. It's great. You really liked it too. Yeah. So it basically just plays same base rules as Pandemic, but as you go through the campaign, it adds more mechanics, more stuff. There's like a whole theme and story mm -hmm. of, about the pandemic. Oh no, this seems sad to talk about. Too. Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> yeah, oh, Pandemic. Uh, but each basically each game is a different month, and of a year. you unlock <laughs> new, new content and new twists and new rules, new like abilities. And you also can kind of make your characters in that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you, like you customize your characters. Your character. Uh, and there are spoilers, but there's like a story, and yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. interesting. We won't spoil it, yeah, because it's super um, good. I hear Pandemic Season Zero is amazing. Season so, Zero? Oh yeah, it's two, and now it's zero. Oh, we haven't even done two. God damn. Yeah, I really want to um, play through them. And I will say, Pandemic Legacy. One of the reasons that I think, because so Gloomhaven can be pretty challenging, mm -hmm. but I think. Pandemic Legacy is very challenging and it's really tense because mm. it is so... I don't think I've ever won a game of regular Pandemic. I think I've lost <laughs> every single game I've ever played of just regular basic... Really? Like, I think so. I haven't played wow. it as much as you. Okay. And But I, Pandemic is easy to lose. Yeah, it's easy Pandemic to lose. is not... I could say it's like hard to win, but it's easy to just like get fucked up in that game. Well, I think the scariest part about Legacy is if you fuck up, it's permanent. You get in Pandemic Legacy, you get two chances, right? Well, not just that, but like when you when you mess up a city in Pandemic Legacy, oh, it's permanent. You yeah. put stickers you put stuff on, it, on the board, and it gets more and more permanently damaged, and the stickers are permanent. So, for example, like in my number two game, Gloomhaven, mm -hmm. uh, if you die if your party like loses you can just basically reset that map you can choose are we going to retry 
and then basically you can balance it to not be as difficult if it was super difficult and sometimes we're just like no we just made a bad mistake let's just try again with like the regular settings mm -hmm. but pandemic legacy for each month you get two chances and if you fail both of them you just have to move on and it's like here's how bad yeah. you failed although you receive like little you do get stuff to like kind of to, to balance it help you yeah but yeah for sure pandemic legacy it just gets harder and harder as it goes on because cities like get blacked out or like just mm -hmm. destroyed or quarantined yeah this is very <laughs> depressing yeah very depressing but pandemic time, huh? legacy is my favorite game i think of all time that's a it's, great choice. it's so tense we were so immersed when we were playing that game because yeah. it was like, well, you got to make the right decisions or like four cities are going to go down. Yeah, uh, that's a very solid 10. I, uh, I'm i not surprised to see a lot of co-op games on there because I know you love co-op games. Yeah, I don't like games where somebody else can be mean to me. See, I love games. I love all games, <laughs> but I love being mean. But uh, a lot of your games were are... Were you surprised that anything wasn't on there? Mm, I was more surprised that things were on there like Clank. But I, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, know. I noticed. Deception, Murder, in Hong Kong almost made my list. All right, you know that, what? That was, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll do that in a separate video sometime. That'll be fun. All right, that was the top 10. Uh, if you want to see any other types of board game videos or videos with uh, the missus, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, what? The missus. All right. <laughs> uh, not the missus. The, 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 the... Who, who says that? Are you like a... 50s. I'm with the missus and uh, let us know in the comments. Okay, bye. Bye.